Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of the .NET Show, I'm going to create a MAUI Android app that installs a service which runs in the background and starts automatically when the phone boots up. I'll show two demos. First, we'll spin up a timer that shows a notification every 10 seconds. This is just to show us that our code is running in the background and that we can show notifications. Next, we'll implement a SignalR system by which the service can receive push messages and display them. Now, mind you, this is only for Android. Doing the same thing in an iOS app is much more involved. Background services in Maui Android is coming right up on the .NET Show. So the goal of this module is to create a Maui Android app that installs a service that runs in the background when the phone boots up. There's no limit to how long the service can run, but we'll be judicious about CPU and memory usage. For these demos, you can use either Maui XAML or Maui Blazor. Most of the code is Android specific with very little UI. So the module consists of two demos. In the first demo, we'll spin up a timer that shows a notification every 10 seconds. This is just to show us that our code is running in the background and that we can show notifications. In the second half, we'll implement a SignalR system by which the service can receive push messages and display them. The point is to learn how to write a background service for your Android apps, from which you can show notifications. How you get data in production is beyond the scope of the demo. The SignalR code should not be used as is in production because there's zero security around the messaging. Also, SignalR doesn't queue messages. If your Android app misses them, they're gone forever. So this is the repo right here. GitHub.com slash Carl Franklin slash Maui Android FS for foreground services. Now, I have a confession to make. We're actually going to be writing a foreground service. That's why it's FS as opposed to a background service. In Android, there's a distinction. Background services cannot display a notification to the user while it's running. However, since Android 8.0, that's API level 26, the system places restrictions on what these services can do while they're running in the background in order to conserve system resources. This means that you can ensure your service will always be running. On the other hand, foreground services are one of the most reliable ways to ensure that your service is not stopped by the Android system to reclaim resources. Foreground services can also display notifications while they're running. So I want a service that runs in the background, can be registered and run by a Maui Android app, doesn't require the UI to be running, can be stopped by the Maui app, can be uninstalled when the Maui app is uninstalled, can show notifications, and can set the number in the little red circle on the app icon. I started with the code in this blog post by Mark Timmings. It's a good start, but I ended up with something more suited to my needs. Mark's post doesn't cover automatically starting the service when the phone boots up, for example. Still, it's a great start, and I quote him at times in this documentation. So let's go. Now you can create either a .NET MAUI app, which uses XAML, or a .NET MAUI Blazor app, which uses Blazor. In the repo, I have code for both. I'm going to stick with Blazor because, well, that's me. I'm going to call it MAUI Android FS. .NET 7. And here we go. So most of the code is going to be over here in the Platforms Android folder. To this folder, I'm going to add a class called My Background Service. So this class inherits Android App Service, which allows you to override the onStart command. And we're also using this service attribute right here. So check out line 12 here. I'm creating an integer by creating an object and getting the hash code. This is a kind of a hack of a shortcut to get a random integer. and 
I don't really need a random integer. I could use one, but I don't like magic numbers. This badge number right here is what we're going to show in that little red circle. And there's my timer. So we're not using the onBind method, which is used for bound services. So I'm simply going to return null here. So let's dive into this stuff. Now there's some squiggles here. We'll get to that. So the first thing we do is retrieve a string from this intent. An intent is a software mechanism for describing an operation to be performed. It's a way to pass data between components of an Android app but it also allows communication between different applications. So on the intent in main activity, I'm going to set an, a string into a dictionary, and the key is input extra. And it's essentially going to be set to background service. So I need to create a notification intent so I can create a pending intent so I can create a notification compat builder so I can use the build method and show the notification. Okay. So first I'm creating an intent from this background service with a type of main activity. And from that I'm creating a pending intent from this notification intent. Then I create a new notification compat.builder and I need a channel ID, which I'm gonna add as a static string in main application. It just has to be a unique string. Then that input that we retrieved, I'm calling set content text, passing that input. So that's going to be background service. Then the small icon is the icon that goes in the top left part of the screen, right up here. That's the icon we want. And that's displayed when the service is running. We'll get to that. Then I'm going to set the content intent, which is the pending intent. And the whole idea is that when the user taps on a notification, we want our app to show up. Then I'm creating the timer. Here's my elapsed method. Passing the notification here as the state. So that's going to get passed around. And I want that to go off every 10 seconds. Then I'm returning start command result.sticky. Now, sticky is just an enumeration here, and it tells the OS to recreate the service when it has enough memory after running out of memory. I could also say not sticky, and then the OS won't bother recreating the application if, for example, the device runs out of memory. But I'm going to say sticky. So when the timer elapses every 10 seconds, I'll get to this Android Service Manager in a minute. That's a class I'm going to write. I increment the badge number. Remember, that's what goes here. And I'm going to create a string from the current time. The state that's passed in is the notification compat builder. So this is what I use to set that number in there. Then I'm going to set the content title to that time string. Now we already have the content text set to background service. Then I'm going to say start foreground and pass in notification.build, which returns a notification. All right, we're going to now go to main application and replace it. So there's that static read only string channel ID, background service channel. Just has to be unique. This is all the same. This is all the same. Now let's jump down to on create, which we're overriding. So, first of all, this warning right here. This pragma warning is related to platform compatibility checks in .NET. It's part of a set of warnings and errors that help developers avoid inadvertently using APIs that aren't available on the platforms they intend to run their code on. So this basically warns when code uses an API that doesn't exist on the platforms that are specified. By writing this, the developer is saying, I know this code might be using APIs that aren't available on all platforms, but I want to suppress the warnings about it. So first we're creating a notification channel with that channel ID. And the notification has the name background service channel and also an importance level of high. Finally, we're creating that notification channel. Now let's go to main activity. So this is the second time you've seen Android Service Manager. And so therefore, 
We should probably add that now and come back to this. So I wanted a simple way to communicate between the Android code and the UI and any other code. And the answer I came up with is this static class with static members. So we add a reference to the main activity here. I have a Boolean is running, which we were just looking at. And then I have start my service and stop my service. Now, the reason that I have this here is because the UI and other code doesn't have direct access to the main activity. So that's why I'm doing this. So now you can see I'm setting in the constructor in main activity the main activity property, the Android service manager, to myself. Now I have a start service and a stop service. These are called from Android service manager. But I have to actually do the work in main activity because I need to create my intent from background service. I'm putting that extra string with the key input extra in there, background service. Remember we saw that. And then I'm calling start service. Stop service is the same. I create the intent and just call stop service. So you notice that is running is not set in start service. We'll set that in the service itself once the code is running. Right here in the service, when the time relapses, that means it's running. I'm going to set that Boolean to true. All right, now let's deal with the code that ensures that the service starts when the phone starts up. To do that, I'm going to add a class called boot receiver. Now boot receiver is going to inherit broadcast receiver. And I've got attributes up here to set enabled to true, exported to true, and direct boot aware to true. I'm also sending the intent filter, which is an array. And there's one element, intent action boot completed. Then I'm overriding on receive. So essentially what's going to happen is this gets registered with the system when the phone boots up and it receives this action here, action boot completed. And so right at this point, this could easily be phone underscore boot. So just to show that it has booted up, I have this little toast here, which is Android widget toast. Make text, passing in the context. The message is boot completed, event received. So that's going to show at the bottom of the screen on my Android phone. Then these two lines of code start the service. Now the most important part is configuration. And that's done in Android manifest. In order to see the XML, I'm going to open it with the XML text editor. So this is just the default. I'm going to replace it with a whole bunch of stuff, mostly permissions. All right, so my permissions are at the top. Receive boot completed. Required if you want to have a broadcast receiver that handles boot up. Access network state and internet are a given. Foreground service is required to make that foreground service. Now in the application tag, I've broken this out a little bit. The name of the application you have to have in here. If you've named your application something other than Maui Android FS, that goes here. Debuggable has to be true if you're going to debug on your phone, which I recommend. Enabled true. Allow backup true. And you have to also add this permission, receive boot completed, to the application. So these are the icons right here. They were there before. And supporting RTL is true. Now we're adding a receiver in the application. The name is dot boot receiver because that's the name of my class boot receiver. If you have a different class name, change it. Oh, and also you might end up changing it anyway, because I've noticed that after several times of uninstalling and reinstalling and, you know, redeploying to the phone, when you turn it off and turn it back on again, the boot receiver doesn't get the message. So if that's the case, I found a workaround, which is just to add something to change the name of the class. And of course, you have to change it. 
here too. That does the job. So then the same things that we added as attributes on the boot receiver have to be set. Direct boot aware, enabled, exported. Also, the permission, receive boot completed. Then I have an intent filter for boot completed. And the category is default. So this is all required to do what we want to do. All right, now we can finally get to the user interface. So I'm going to go to my index page, change it to this, and here we go. I have a button that says stop service and a message, which is just a string. Now notice that I'm wrapping my code in if Android compiler directives. So I'm only going to do this if we're running on Android. So to stop the service, I'm calling Android Service Manager Stop My Service, setting the message to service is stopped. And this is how we can start up the service when the application is run. But first, we want to make sure that it's not running. If it's not running, that means maybe we had the app up and we stopped the service and then we run the app again. So it's not running. So here we go. Call start my service, set the message to service has started. Otherwise, it's going to be service is running. Subtle difference. Now I'm going to need the icon for the top. And that's in Android resources drawable, but it's not there. However, it is there in my repo. So I'm just going to drag it into my resources folder. And there's the drawable icon. It's the same icon that Mark Timmings included in his blog post. All right, now my Android phone is plugged in. So I'll select it and let's run. Here we go, the service is started and we should start receiving notifications. There's the first one. It brings me back to the phone. Now let me close the app. So if I look at the screen, now I've got three messages. You can see right here, that number is going to increase. Okay, and if I press that notification, I can go back here and I can stop the service. Everybody's happy. And now let's do push notifications with SignalR. So in this demo, we're going to create a SignalR hub for broadcasting messages. We'll subscribe to those messages in the Android service, and we'll create a console app for sending messages to the service on the phone via SignalR. The service will then display the message as a notification and increment the number in the little red circle on the app icon. So to the solution, I'm going to add a new project, and it will be an ASP.NET Core empty project called Maui Broadcast Server. Since it's in the solution, it's contained within here. And in the case of my repo, it's also added to the solution. So let's go down to Program CS, and we'll add this. So I'm adding SignalR, and I'm mapping the hub, Broadcast Hub, which we haven't created. So let's create that now. Very simple, one method, send message, and then it calls the receive message method on the client. Now, the next thing you need to do here is publish this to Azure. Now, I've already done it, and mine's called Maui Broadcast Server, but you'll have to choose a unique name. Now, I'm going to add a console app. Now, I'm going to call it send message to phone. So I need to add the SignalR client package right there, Microsoft ASP.NET Core SignalR client. And I'm going to replace program with the following. All right, so I'm using SignalR client. I have a message string. I have a hub connection. And the URL for me is mauibroadcastserver.azurewebsites.net 
slash broadcast hub. But this will be the name of your Azure web app. So I'm going to try starting. And then I'm going into a loop. Enter a message to send to the phone or press enter to exit. Read the line. And if the message is an empty string, I'll break the loop. Otherwise, I'm going to invoke send message in the hub, passing that message. Then, of course, the hub sends that to all the other clients that are connected. And their receive message will fire. So now we have to modify the MAUI app to handle that signal R. So we need the client package as well. And everything really happens in the service. So I'm going to change my background service to this. So here I've set notification uh, outside of the timer. And I've got my hub connection here. This is all the same. I got my notification. And now right away, I'm going to show message number one, service running. All right. And this is how you do it right here. Then I'm going to start the timer every 10 seconds. And in timer elapsed, I'm going to set Android Service Manager is running to true. And then I'm going to call Ensure Hub Connection. If my hub connection is null, I'm going to create a new one, just like we did before. Set up my receive message method, in which I'm going to increment the badge number, set it, set the message, show the notification. Then I'm going to start the hub connection. Now, if the hub connection state is not connected, I'm going to try starting it, right? We're not sending anything from here. We're just receiving. So we want to make sure every 10 seconds, the connection is built and our receive message handler is set up. So now I'm going to uninstall this app just by doing a long press and uninstalling it. Yes. And let's deploy it again. The service has started. We should get that first notification. There it is. Now I can actually close the app. Now I'll enter a message. Hey now. There it is. There you go. Push notifications in Android. Now let's talk about battery life. I let it run overnight. And in 10 hours, the battery went down 6%, just sitting idle. So the next day, I changed the interval to 60 seconds. In over 10 hours, the battery went down only 2%. So if you're going to use this approach to either pull for new data on a timer or check the status of your connection, you'll probably want to do a similar test. And hey, that's my demo today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.